dear students today we will discuss some basic things some very elementary things which are very important for you to learn because you are beginners in physics you are just the first semester students so today we will try to specify certain quantities in linear motion and in case of a rotatory motion so let us try to understand how do we define a quantity in linear motion and how do we define the same quantity in the rotatory motion right now let us begin with the simple things for example mass of a body in case of linear motion is simply m but in case of rotatory motion it is more important to use the concept of moment of inertia moment of inertia and what is that that is the sum total of the products of mass and distance square of each particle from the axis of rotation say if you have mi number of particles and r1 r2 r3 r4 are their distances from the axis of rotation then the summation mi ri square is called as moment of inertia and this is actually written by capital i so by this summation mi ri square i mean it is the sum total of mi m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square plus m3 r3 square plus so on up to nth particle right so the sum total of all these moments is called as moment of inertia so in case of rotatory motion it is more useful it is more beneficial to use the concept of moment of inertia than mass number 1 number 2 in case of linear motion we define the displacement between any two points as x the linear displacement right but in case of rotatory motion we know that we have to define a radius vector with respect to which rotations are taking place and rotations are always discussed in terms of the angle by how much angle has the body turned so instead of x we will define theta here angular displacement right the next thing would be that in case of linear motion we define velocity as x by t that is distance by time or x dot here we define angular velocity that is omega is equal to theta by t or that is also written as theta dot here we define acceleration linear acceleration a as velocity by time or that is equal to x double dot here we define angular acceleration that is denoted by alpha and alpha is omega by t that is angular velocity by time and that is equal to theta double dot right so here we define linear momentum p that is simply the product of mass and velocity all of you know that so here we define angular momentum and angular momentum is denoted either by l or by j and we know that since here it is mass into velocity here for mass we will write the moment of inertia and for velocity we will write the angular velocity so it is i omega so similarly here you will define the force as mass into acceleration here you will define torque torque is the reasonable term to define here right it is the rotating effect of a force turning a huh? turning effect a force which produces a turning effect that is called torque it is denoted by this symbol tau right and in analogy with this since here it is mass into acceleration for mass in case of rotatory motion we know that we write i and for acceleration we write angular acceleration that is alpha similarly another quantity is that this force can also be written as uh, rate of change of linear momentum and here this torque can be expressed as rate of change of angular momentum dj by dt or dl by dt right because angular momentum is denoted either by l or by j similarly kinetic energy in this case in the linear motion will be defined as half of mv square but in case of rotatory motion this kinetic energy of rotation will be defined as half of for m again i will write i and for v we will write 
the angular velocity that is i omega square. So once again you can have a quick glance at various quantities that I have defined in case of linear motion and in case of rotatory motion. Here mass is important, here moment of inertia is important. Here the linear distance, it is the linear distance or the displacement. Here angular displacement is important, that is theta. Here the velocity is a linear kind of velocity. So it is denoted by x by t. Here it is the angular velocity, theta by t. Here it is linear acceleration, v by t, x double dot. Here it is angular acceleration, omega by t, theta double dot. Here it is linear momentum. Here it is angular momentum. It is defined in this way. Here it is a linear force. Here it is a turning force called torque. Torque is the word. You might have known it, read it in your previous classes. So similarly, f is also defined as dp by dt. So torque is also defined by dj by dt. These are various analogous terms that are defined in linear and rotatory motion. Now, let us try to establish certain relations. For example, let us try to establish the relation between the linear velocity and the angular velocity. Now, suppose you have a rigid body and this is the axis of rotation with respect to which it is rotating with angular velocity omega. Now, let us choose any point O <coughs> on this axis of rotation with respect to which you define the position vector of a point on the body. So this is the point P on the body and its radius vector with respect to this O is R, right? Now, if this angle is theta, then obviously from this triangle you can find that perpendicular by hypotenuse is how much? <coughs> so it is R sine theta. So this much distance will be, suppose this point is Q, this QP, which is actually perpendicular to the axis of rotation is how much? Obviously, it is r sin theta. So, the linear velocity of this particle, which is a constituent particle of this rigid body, is in this direction, for example, v. And we can find that this v is actually perpendicular to the plane containing omega and r. So, v will be given by omega cross r or we can write it, it is omega r sin theta n where n is the unit vector which is perpendicular to the plane containing omega and r, right? So, r sin theta is this component qp we have defined that already that qp is r sin theta and omega r sin theta obviously is the magnitude of cross product right omega cross r that is omega r sin theta and n cap is the unit vector that is perpendicular to the plane containing omega and r or n is the unit vector along the direction of v along the direction of linear velocity of the particle right so once you have established the relationship between the linear velocity and angular velocity of a particle from here we can proceed to find what is the relation between linear acceleration and angular acceleration of the particle. So since v is equal to omega cross r, let's choose to differentiate this equation. So this will be dv by dt is equal to d omega by dt cross r plus omega cross dr by dt as simple as that. So dv by dt is simply the linear acceleration d omega by dt. It is the angular acceleration alpha, we have already defined that, cross r plus omega cross dr by dt is the linear velocity. So, this is the relationship between linear velocity, angular velocity, angular acceleration and linear acceleration. r is the radius vector and omega is the angular velocity, right? So, this is the equation that connects these four variables, four or five variables, right? So, once you remember all these equations and you practice them, so from here we can choose to do some numerical problems that are based on the conservation of linear momentum, conservation of angular momentum and so on. So, I hope uh, you will try to revise it, work it out of your own, remember it by heart and on the basis of these formulae, you will be able to solve many numerical problems. So that's all.